the Lord bless you, you may be seated. I want to get into this word. Is there a word from the Lord? There is a word. We are covered. By the blood. Tell somebody and tell them I'm covered. Tell them my family is covered. Tell them my house is covered. of Jesus and all that he done for me then my soul cried out hallelujah and praise God for serving me he's alright with me you all to just tell somebody he's alright Listen, if you got your Bibles. Oh! Yeah! There is an incident that occurs in the word of the Lord that God began to deal with me about this week and I was trying to get into something else and the Lord kept directing me back to an incident that occurred in the life of Abraham in the 22nd chapter and uh, the commentary says that God tests Abraham. The biblical explanation, so glad to see Professor Allen, Mr. Piano, says that God tests Abraham. The biblical explanation of it relates to the testing of Abraham in regards to his faith in God. It is a mirror reflection of many of the lives of you that are here listening to me speak to you tonight. This is one time that you really need to take note of what I'm saying to you simply because many of us can relate in actuality to some of the circumstances and conditions that confronted Abraham as being blessed of God, but yet his blessings are delayed. Delay does not mean denial. Neither can we take what God says very lightly. When the Lord spoke to Abraham and told him, Abraham, leave your kindred and go out and I'm going to bless you. And Abraham looked for a city with a foundation whose builder and maker was God. Upon leaving his family and going out at the word of God, Abraham encounters one test after another. The reason I say that we can relate to this because many of you under the sound of my voice, the Lord made you a promise 
and look like every sense the Lord made you a promise about blessing you. Look like all hell break loose. And instead of you being blessed, sometimes you feel like you're cursed. Oh, come on now. Somebody know what I'm talking about. And, and, and when God makes you a promise, many people think that when God says something, that it's conditional. In some instances and under some circumstances, what God says and his promises are conditional. But all of the promises of God are not conditional. Many times God will test you in the interim of what he says and the fruition of what he says comes to pass. In the interim, there are things that you go through that God allows the enemy to try you on every hand to see if you're going to hold to what God says. When God told Abraham, I'm going to bless you, Abraham from that point started to go through some things. Number one, let's take a look at the life of Abraham. Before we do that, look at the 22nd chapter of Genesis and the first verse. You will find these words as they are recorded in the book of Genesis. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest. Now you got to get the, the wording of this and understand where God is coming from. God says to Abraham, Take thine only son. Now, the reason God says thine only son is because Isaac is the son of promise. It does not negate the fact that Ishmael was his son by the handmaiden, but Isaac is the son of promise. Ishmael is already gone with his mother, already getting ready to enjoy his blessings. But now God tells Abraham to take his only son, the only son that he's got left, and tells him, now, note what God says, take thy only son whom thou lovest. Now that's, that's like a slap in the face to say, now you want me to take my son, not only just my son, but you know how I feel about it. Take now thy only son whom thou lovest. Now this is saying to us, God is saying, look, whatever you do, I don't care who you love or how you feel about them, are you willing to sacrifice whatever you love for me? Ooh, this is going to be kind of deep tonight. God says, take not only son whom thou lovest. I know how you feel about him. I know what you, how you care about him. I know what you went through to get him. I know what you went through to keep him. I know how you feel right now, being in your old age, and here's the son, the heir of your promise. I know how you feel about him, but take that only son you got and bring him and offer him as a sacrifice. Are we willing to give up everything we love to receive the blessings of God? Touch somebody and tell them, God's blessings is on the way. Don't be scared. Speak that into their spirit. Tell them, God's blessings is on the way. Now tell the one on the other side, are you ready to receive it? That's tough. Anybody can say what you won't do if you've never been there. Anybody can say what you will do if you haven't been there. But when push comes to serve, what are you willing to give up when the Lord says, give it up? Now understand what happens here, and I wish I had time to really preach this thing to you, because you've got to understand the metaphor that takes place here. God speaks to Abraham and says to him, take thine only son whom thou lovest. And if you've got your Bible, it says to him, and get thee into the land of Moriah. 
and offer him there for a burnt offering upon, upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. God does not give an explanation. God does not explain to Isaac. God does not explain to Abraham the purpose of the sacrifice. He does not say to him, if you do this, I'm going to do this. He does not say to him, listen, whatever you do, I'm going to still raise him up. God does not tell him that. God says, take your only son, get up to the land of Moriah, offer your son as a sacrifice upon the mountain that I tell you to go to. You want to tell me, God, that you want me to take the only son that I've got? I've raised this boy. He's 13 years old. Here I am, 114. And this boy is the son of my promise. He's the heir to everything I have. You gave me this boy, and now you're going to tell me to take him, and you know how I feel about it, and offer him up as a burnt offering? What's with it, God? What's happening? What if God would say to you, take that new car you got right now, trade it in and get the money and give it to the minister? All right, come on, relate, relate, relate. What if God tell you to take whatever you love and God knows you love it, you, you love it with all your heart and God said, give it up. Well, God does not tell you, if you give it up, I'm going to bless you. God does not tell you, if you do it, what he's going to do. He just said, give it to me. My God, how many of us would take the stand that Abraham takes and goes to God and says in the third verse, and Abraham rose up early in the morning. He didn't wait. When God spoke it, Abraham immediately responded. Most of us, if God says something, we say, now, wait a minute. God, give me another sign. Tell me one more time what you said did. You can be lying on your bed of affliction, sick, and the Lord speak to you and say, get up and praise me. You can be aching from your head to your feet and you say, huh? God does not often repeat what he says. When he speaks it, you've got to take God at his word. If God say, get up, you ache it, you hurt me, you can't move. God say, get up and praise him. You ought to be struggling, falling out the bed, on your way, getting up, trying your best to give him some praise. Because God does not say anything negative unless he's going to bring a positive out of a negative. Have I got a witness around here? Oh, everybody getting quiet now. Don't nobody want to go there. Most of us want to hold on to what we got. We say, God ain't going to tell me to give up something I done suffered and worked hard for. God ain't going to tell me to give it up. You don't know what God's going to say. You got to take God at his word. If God says, start happen on one foot, ain't nothing for you to do but grab one leg and start happen on that one foot. Abraham, by God, rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and claimed the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Abraham had undaunted faith. Notice when he said, y'all wait here. Me and the boy, we're going yonder and worship and we coming back. My God, the man believed God that I don't care what comes or what goes. If God tells me to offer my son, God must have something better for me. Hallelujah. You got to look at what Abraham had been through. Look like now God was getting ready to give him the final test. Abraham, y'all, God had promised him a son at 75 years old. He didn't get the son until he was 100 years old. 25 years later, when he thought he was getting old and couldn't handle it, God all of a sudden blesses him. 
Then not only that, in the interim of God blessing him with a son, his wife tries to help him out and gives him a handmaid. After the handmaiden conceives and has a son, Abraham is assured that perhaps this is the son of promise. He goes through literal hell with his wife and with the handmaiden because of the birth of a son by the name of Ishmael. After God sends Ishmael and his mother off into the wilderness, he listens around with no heir to the promise. But yet God had made him a promise 25 years earlier and told him he was going to give him a son. Many of you right now in the sound of my voice, God told you he was going to bless you. God told you he was going to deliver. God told you he was going to heal. But look like God ain't stepping about you. But I stopped by here tonight to let you know that if God said it, get ready. You ain't going nowhere until your blessing catch up with you. You better tell somebody, I know your blessing is on the way. You better tell them like you mean it, say, I know your blessing is on the way. Sometimes you feel like you're getting old, feel like ain't nothing gonna happen, feel like your body is getting weak, you're getting warm. And I'm here to tell you, if God say the blessing is coming, God's got a way of healing you. God's got a way of putting the brakes on time and letting your blessing catch up with you. And you've been through enough until when you finally do get your blessing, you know how to appreciate it. That's a good place to give the Lord some praise about now. Come on, somebody, give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, laid it upon Isaac, his son. Now some nerve, y'all, get ready to kill his son and makes his son take the wood that is used for the sacrifice and carry it for his own funeral. It's like telling the boy, carry your own coffin. God, I wish I had somebody here that knew the Bible. Carry your own coffin and let's go to the place of the sacrifice. Look what happens here. And uh, took the fire in his hand and a knife and they went both of them together. Abraham does not question God but Isaac questions Abraham. Next verse said, and Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, my father, and he said, here am I, my son. And he said, behold, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, God, I feel you here, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. In other words, you are the sacrifice. But in his spirit, trying to assure the boy, God's gonna make a way. How many of us can take God at his word? And if God says, do something without question, without doubting, without trying to figure it out. Take God in his word and say, if God said it, that settles it. You got to take God in his word. I don't care how shaky it might look. I don't care how unreasonable it might seem. If God said do it, get ready for your blessing. God sometimes figures in my mind, I said now, God had already taken Abraham through a whole lot of things. But instead of God blessing him right away, he had made him a promise and said that your seed will be like the sand of the sea for number. I'm going to bless you. All you got to do is obey me. God tells him now, at the age of 114, with his son 13 years old, going to the place of sacrifice, Son questioning him, saying, I see the wood, I see the fire, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? And Abraham says, without wavering one time, God will provide. 
himself a lamb for the sacrifice. Then takes his bar and he says unto him, they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar. Can you imagine the mind of Isaac sitting there watching his father build an altar? not knowing where the sacrifice was coming from. That's why it's good for us to teach our young people the, the, the value of having faith in God. Yeah, Abraham says to him, he didn't say, son, I'm going to provide, but he said, son, God will provide himself a lamb for the sacrifice. He builds an altar, y'all, and lay the wood in order, and then takes his only son and ties him up and lays him on the altar. Y'all got to go with me here now. When he lays his son upon the wood, and then Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. The obedience of Abraham, y'all, is unquestioned on every hand. Because instead of Abraham questioning God about why am I doing this, he immediately obeys the voice of God. I know many of you under the sound of my voice, God has spoken to you. But instead of you taking God at his word, you look at the circumstances, you look at the conditions, and you question God and say, why do I have to go through what I'm going through? Why do I have to suffer like I'm suffering? But if God told you he was going to bless you, you got to get ready for your blessing. Because in the intro of what God promised you and the time that the blessing comes to pass, there are many tests and trials that you must encounter. But one thing you got to know, that if God told you he was going to bless you, you might as well get ready for your blessing. Because no devil in hell can stop you from receiving your blessing. The wind may blow, the storm may rise, but if you hold on, oh glory, if you hold on just a little while longer, God will bless your soul. Have I got a witness here? Somebody tonight, under the sound of my voice, God got you listening because your blessing is right around the corner. Your deliverance is right around the corner. Your breakthrough is right around the corner. What God promised you, if you just hold on, just a little while longer, God's gonna bless you and the devil can't curse you. Our glory in the midst of the test, with Isaac lying on the wood, Abraham takes the knife in his hand. Understand another thing, God abhorred human sacrifice. If you can't beat it, get off of it. In the midst of what God was doing, God was testing him to see how much faith Abraham actually had. Was he willing? to go through with the sacrifice. Was he willing to take God at his word when he told him before the sacrifice that your son Isaac is the son of the promise, that your son Isaac is the one that will carry on. But now it looks like God has contradicted himself by telling Abraham to take your only son whom thou lovest and bring him up to the mountain and offer him up as a burnt offering as a human sacrifice Isaac stood there not knowing what was going on but Abraham willing to give up his only son in order to give God the glory 
in the mix of the knife that was in his hand. He started down in a downward plunge to take the life of his son. But in the mix of the plunge, God dispatched an angel and said, go down and stop Abraham. Why did God stop him? Because when Isaac laid on the altar before the sacrifice could be complete, in order for the sacrifice to be acceptable, the first thing that had to happen, the one that was making the sacrifice to God had to be willing to give up everything. The sacrifice had to be willing to give up its life. No rebellion, no rebuttal, but just take my life. Whatever it takes to please God, I'm willing to do it. I don't know when, I don't know where, but Daddy, if you tell me that God will provide, I'll take you at your word. Abraham said, Father, if you tell me to offer my son, then I know that you're able to give him back to me. If you take him, you can give him back. So Abraham, with the knife in his hand, ready to kill his son, our glory, God's dispatching angel, said, go now and tell Abraham, the test is over. The test is ended. He's passed the test before the angel could get to Abraham. His hand was on a downward plunge. I'm told by the theologian that the knife was ready to pierce the skin of Isaac and plunge through his heart. So the angel spoke and said, God, I can't get to him in time. If I don't holler, he'll put the knife in his heart. God said, holler, Gabriel. Gabriel hollered out. I said, Abraham, hold your head. Oh, glory. The test is over. The test is over. Your brain is in the thicket. Hold your head. Tell somebody the test is over. Your blessing is on the way. Tell them like a meeting and say the test is over. Get ready for your blessing. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. The angel came and said, Abraham, look over in the thicket. When he looked over, he saw a ram that was caught in the thicket. Said, get your son up. I said, get up. When I said, got up, the ropes were cut. I said, looked over and said, now I believe God can do anything. I believe God will do what he said. I stopped by to tell you, it may look rough. It may look tough. But if you hold on to what God told you, your blessing is on the way. Come on up out of where you are. Get ready to receive your blessing. The test is over. You passed the test. It's over now. Your blessing is on the way. Have I got a witness? Your blessing is on the way. Our glory in the mix of it all. When Abraham took the night, looked at his son, and said, boy, I told you that God would provide. Look in the thicket. That's a ram for the sacrifice. Bring the ram over. When he laid the ram down, got ready to make the sacrifice. The angel looked at him and said, Abraham, I got a word for you. It's from the Lord. The Lord told me, God told me to tell you that I'm going to bless you. Said, I swear, 
not by the heavens, because the heavens are my throne. I swear, not by the earth, because the earth is my footstool. I swear, not by the stars. I swear, not by the moon, but I swear by myself that I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. Your blessing is on the way. I swear by myself. I swear by my word. I swear you're going to be blessed. Blessing, you shall be blessed. Living, you shall live. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. I'm blessed because God said I'm blessed. I'm blessed because God said I'm blessed. 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 Yeah. Say your blessing is coming right now. Don't worry, it's on the way. It's yours. It's yours. It's your blessing. Yeah. Start praising it. Be not dismayed. Whatever may come, God will. God will. God will. Take care of you. Shout, dance, sleep, jump, rejoice. Your blessing is on the way. Your blessing is on the way. The devil don't like it, but that's all right. Devil, you a liar. Devil, you a deceiver. I believe God. My blessing. God told me. God promised me. God said it. I'm blessed. It's on the way. You ain't seen nothing. You thought I was blessed. But just wait till the test is over. Just wait till morning time. Just wait till you see me again. When you see me, I'm walking in my blessing. I'm living in my blessing. I'm working in my blessing. I'm moving in my blessing. I'm walking in my blessing. The devil don't like it, but the devil is a liar. I am what I am by the grace of God. I am blessed. You are blessed. Grab somebody and say, you're blessed. I'm a seed of Abraham. I'm an awesome. 
ring of Isaac. I'm an heir of Jacob. I am blessed. You might not like me, but you can't stop my blessing. You might get jealous, but you can't stop my blessing. He gave me an anointing. He gave me a blessing. He gave me a gift. God is working. 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 It's your blessing. It's your blessing.
nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. Till God get through blessing you. And your blessings have just begun. Rejoice in your blessings. Rejoice in your blessings. Rejoice in your blessings. Because can't nobody do you like Jesus? Nobody like Jesus. Nobody. 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 If you believe it, just look at somebody and say, I ain't going nowhere. God ain't through blessing me yet. Look at you. Come on up out of that valley. Come on, come on, get up out of there. Stop walking around here looking depressed. God said, I'm going to bless you. The test is over. I'm going to bless you. And God don't go back. God don't go back on his word. He said, I'm going to bless you. Grab somebody tell them it's rejoicing time. Your blessing is on the way. I know you might not like to touch nobody, but just do this for me and I'm, I'm gonna leave you alone. I, I ain't gonna make you touch too many people. But just touch somebody and tell them, I am not cursed. I am blessed. Hey, he come up on top time.
don't need to shout hallelujah real loud. If you know you're blessed, shout hallelujah and hold it.
Now I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your seed and your seed seed. And by and through your seed shall all nations be blessed. Man, you pass this test with flying colors. I'm going to give you a ministry that's going to bless folk everywhere. You just ain't going to be a blessing to your folk. But your seed going to bless everybody. Everybody that come in contact with you going to be blessed by your anointing. Everybody that cross your path going to be blessed by your anointing. Everybody that touches you going to be blessed by your touch. Because whom the Lord blesses, can't no man curse. Somebody ought to just start praising the Lord in there. How many blessed folk have I got in the house? Blessed and know you blessed. Then you don't mind sharing your blessings. That's what God told Abraham, Donald. He said, everybody that comes in touch with you going to be blessed. Everywhere Abraham went, the land was blessed. The folk were blessed. Everywhere Jacob went, the land was blessed. The folk was blessed. Every place he stopped, when he went to his father-in-law's house, his father-in-law was blessed. His land was blessed. His cattle was blessed. Jacob was blessed. His children were blessed. Joseph was blessed. His children were blessed. His nieces were blessed. His nephews were blessed. His uncles were blessed. His cousins were blessed. The blessings just kept on rolling. And you know what? I'm blessed because I'm a seed of Abraham. I've been adopted into the royal family because 1900 years ago, Jesus stepped on the scene, knocked down 42 generations, and drew together the Old Testament and covered it with the New Testament. And Jacob told us that God was gonna bless us. Jesus picked it up. And when Jesus spoke to us, he spoke through the apostle Paul. And Paul said in the eighth chapter of the book of Romans that we are heirs and joy heirs with Christ in the kingdom of God. Everything Jesus got, I'm a recipient of it because Jesus told me these signs shall follow them that believe. How many Abraham kids I got in here? Put them down. How many relatives of Jesus have I got in the house? Some of y'all don't even know who you are. So you ain't got nothing coming. If you stick with us, you'll find out your identity. We're the head and not the tail. The Lord said, be blessed. I'm going to leave you alone, Professor. I ain't going to bother nobody else. Just hug somebody one more time and tell them God said, be blessed. Take your seat. I'm ready to let you go. I'm blessed because God said, I'm blessed. I'm blessed because God said I'm blessed. Listen, I'm blessed because God said I'm blessed. I'm blessed because God said I'm blessed. 
now more than the conqueror through him that loved me. I'm blessed because God said I'm blessed. I can because God said I can. I can because God said I can. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I'm blessed because God said I'm blessed. I feel God stretching out in me. I feel God stretching out in me. I got myself together. I kicked the devil out. I feel God stretching out in me. some blessed folk in this place. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody want to be saved? Come on. Come on and join our family. All of us have been adopted, so don't feel bad. Come on, you can be a part of this family. You're a backslider, you're a sinner. The Lord wants to bless you, come on. Yay! Say, well, I'm already saved, I want to be a part of the ministry. Now is your chance, come on. Somebody else, come on, come on. Somebody else, come on, come on. Now is your chance, come on, come on. Don't wait. This is your opportunity. To accept Christ. If you're here, don't wait. You don't need to leave here without a covering. You need a covering. And if you don't have a covering, you're unprotected. You need a covering. You need to get up and come on down here. Make your way down. And give the Lord your heart. And let the Lord save you real good. Say, well, I'm already saved, but I just don't have a church home. You need a covering. You need to get up. Don't leave here without a covering. Come on right now. Come on, come on. Feel God stretching out in me. Feel God stretching out in me. I got myself together. I kick the devil out. I feel God stretching out with me. Yeah. If 
you're here, come on. Don't wait, don't wait. church by everybody saying amen. Come on, welcome committee, shake their hand. Welcome committee, come on, shake their hand and welcome them in. Yeah. Feel God stretching out in me. Feel God stretching out in me. I got myself together. I kicked the devil out. Feel God stretching out his feet. Take him in the back. How many of y'all feel like God is still blessing you right now? I need y'all to give the Lord some praise for all of the blessings. 